gentlemen, ladies? At least somebody's awake. I want to talk to you about UFI applications, especially the UFI shell. Has anyone heard of the UFI shell? Oh, oh, there's too many people that know too much here. Anyway, you guys are the ones that are not allowed to ask questions. Okay. What is the UFI shell? Well, the UFI shell consists of a number of parts, two main parts, a set of APIs and a command line interface. The set of APIs are abstract command line and file I.O. aspects of the system. The command line processor is the logic that passes whatever the user puts in to the UFI shell. The UFI shell in many respects looks just like a DOS command line or an OS2 prompt line. The shell, as I said, is a small program similar to functionality as the DOS, sorry, the DOS command line. What did you put in those pills? The DOS command line or the Linux terminal commands. Um, the most important thing, I suppose, about the Uf UFI shell is that it's unusual on that it's not a client of an operating system. If you think about uh, Windows, the command prompt, that is a part of the operating system. The same applies to OS2. This is not a part of any operating system. You might consider the UEFA shell as a subsection or an extension of the BIOS but it's more than that. The underlying features, set and size, are so important that of, of the uh, EFI shell that in some cases it is even flashed onto the motherboard. What does the EFI shell do? It gives you access to connected devices, whatever they may be, you can read and write to those devices. You can do simple tasks like listing directories, the contents of a directory. You can run scripts. And what I think is one of the important things for us is you can change and update the MVRAM. So in other words, if you want, from the EFI shell, you can change the boot order. You can run or start EFI programs. <coughs> Sorry. The UFI shell is not generally contained in the flash device, but is preloaded onto the EFI partition. So in your EFI partition, you will find a directory which contains the EFI shell. It's generally in the directory EFI tools and the name is called shell x64.efi. Uh, the x64 referring to 64-bit architecture. <coughs> you do have uh, various versions, some for ARM processors, so the name is then changed. Depending on how your system is set up, the EFI shell can be started via a boot manager, <coughs> and I will talk about boot manager tomorrow or as an option in the UFI BIOS itself. In any way, you can always start it if it's there. The basics. Within, within the UFI shell, colors are used to help identify things. Most text is gray, Emphasize items are white, but yellow is also used to indicate file systems or block devices. Here you can see, this is what you will see at the prompt. 
in yellow shell, and then FSO. I'll tell you what FSO is later. Interestingly enough, file and path names are generally not case sensitive. Case sensitive. It's a bit early, isn't it? Um, blue is used to indicate a directory. Yellow, executable items. And that is basically what you get on the screen. So looking at the colors will help you identify stuff. Within the UEFI shell, we do not have drive letters. So unlike Windows or OS2, there's no drive C at all. It is a little bit like Linux in that respect, except we call the file system zero, file system one, to indicate the items. The shell only directly supports FAT and FAT32 file systems. Besides file systems, there are also block devices, and they are indicated with the, the identification block zero, block one, and so forth. A block device may, in fact, apply to a complete hard disk. The interfaces are constructed at the moment the UFI shell starts and its, UFI and its environment is initialized. Interestingly enough, both the backslash and forward slash can be used when specifying a file name. I always get mixed up when I switch from Linux to Arca OS and I put the slashes the wrong way around, so this helps. The control C is used, as in most systems, to terminate an action. As you know, if you've been running in a uh, command line, you type something, control C breaks that action off. The EFI also has environmental variable in the same way as we have with the set command in OS2. It even uses the set command. You can, for example, set the path by typing it set path and then the path name. This is valid until the next reboot, so it is not persistent unless you put it in a script. To clear anything out of the path rather than saying set the path name um, without any variable as in OS2, you have to say set minus D to clear it. You can uh, see what the variable is in the same way we do in OS2. Echo percent, variable name percent. The problem is always, it's a little bit like what you know, but not quite. So we always have problems when we're typing stuff. EFI, rather like DOS and Linux, can run programs that are listed in the environmental path. There's nothing new in this, is it? Uh, for example, here we say if set path fs0, colon, sys, config. So this is a path that we've now set and can be used. In this case, the path is case sensitive. This is the problem. Sometimes it doesn't make any difference, but sometimes it does. Again, the path is valid until the next reboot. On the keyboard, you can use the up arrow, which will scroll back rather like in 4OS2 to the previous command, down arrow to the next one. You have a completion function. So if you're looking at a file name and you've just partially typed it in and use the tab key, it goes on to the rest. 
Um, unlike 4 OS 2, there is no round robin. So you press the tab key and it always goes on. Page up will scroll up a page, page down scrolls down a page. But if you start playing with this, you find this out very easily. Um, there's one standard option which you can use with a lot of commands, and that is the minus B. Basically, this limits the output to the screen to one screen. So if what you are listing, for example, you're doing a directory listing, it's longer than 24 lines. If you type directory with min B, it will only go on the screen until you press the space bar and finish off the rest. The example here given is DevTree. This gives a device listing and the B minus B on one page. Okay, how do you switch between file systems? We have first of all to use the map min r command to refresh the mappings. And this you generally see when you start up a whole list of mappings. And then you have to tell which file system you want to select. The example <laughs> here is I use shell map minus r to have a look at all the available file systems. I will see that there is one called FSO. And I can say shell FSO. And I will then be selected to that particular file system. Rather like you type in D double appoint, sorry, D colon, <laughs> and you are then selected to drive D. There's fortunately a very, very good help command. If you type in help with the minus B, you will get a page listing of all the commands. And with a space bar, it will go on to the next. This is the sort of thing you get. You get alias, displays, creates, or deletes UFI sh shell aliases. Attributes you can change to a file. So you get a complete list of all the available commands, and that's very handy. What is even better is if you type in a specific command. For example, echo help, you will get this on the screen. <laughs> echo can be on or off, can have a message, and it tells you here exactly what this thing does. It gives you more information. It even gives you examples. So for every command, you will get all this information plus an example, which is very handy. Because sometimes the syntax, what you think, is slightly different from what it is. And with an example, you know you're doing the right thing. The example here was to echo hello world. Now, very simple, echo hello world. As with most file systems, we have some redirection and piping. You can, and I should emphasize the space character. Normally in OS2, if you say uh, redirect the output, the greater than um, character, and then a file name, that's okay. Here, you must use a space after the redirection symbol. Similar to uh, OS2, we have also the option to redirect, which is, of course, your error output. So a lot of it is so similar, it should be so easy. Piping is interesting. Again, you have to have the space character after the piping symbol. And it e is either in UCS2 format, or if you use the pipe symbol with the A, then it's in ASCII format. I won't go through all the commands because that's crazy, but you can see 
some standard commands, and you recognize them more or less. Eh? LS, rather like in uh, Unix, Linux. It's also, you can use directory, both do the same. Change directory, copy, move, remove, map, or edit. Editing is quite nice in as much as you have a standard editor already available for the command line. It's part of the shell. Whoops. These are some others. Set, clear screen. Clear screen is handy. And what is nice is the BCFG commands, which is the command that can set and change the boot configuration. And this for us is probably one of the most uh, widely used commands because you want to change the boot order. And it is difficult to sometimes change it from the UEFI BIOS itself. UEFI also has scripts. They are generally with the extension .nsh. And they are pure text files, so you can see in the script file exactly what the script does. The shell looks for the script files in the current directory first, and then through the path environment. Shell scripts are carriage return delimited. And normally when starting the shell, the script starts up the file startup.nsh. I would hope I could have shown you uh, the shell starting on the PC, but because we can't show the uh, via the Beamer, that is a little bit difficult. But if anybody wants to see it later, Yes, but I haven't got that set up. I know that's possible, but I haven't got it set up. We will do that then later, okay. and we'll see how long the 30 seconds takes. <laughs> <laughs> Warranty to the door. Scripting commands, yeah, they're, they're again similar. Echo, exit. The slight difference is the four loops. You have a four and an N4. Go to, we know, we have an F, an else, and an end if. Shift is also similar to OS2, and you just shift the parameters to the next parameter. Here is an example. So let's have a look, and you, you start to understand it immediately. Echo is off. Mode, that is the screen mode, 80 by 25. There's some text, clear screen, and we say if this exists, then go to the find. If it doesn't, then do this, and eventually stop the program. It's, it's fairly easy to read. Questions up till now? It falls off the end. Okay. Of the next page. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yes, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Yeah. So here you see where you have found images on the next page. But again, it is fairly straightforward if you have done any <coughs> small programming using command files or what have you. This is the command you were asking for, the BCFG command, the boot configuration command. Um, it can basically do this. It can display the current boot order. It can add a new item to the boot order. 
it can delete <laughs> a boot item, modify it, move it, or even assign a hotkey if required. Let's have a look how to display the boot order. I'm sorry it's so small, but this is the real screen. What I have here is BCFG, boot, dump, and again the minus B to limit it to one screen. And what you see is then <coughs> boot 3, boot 1, boot 2, these are variable names. You see here the description, this is the AN launcher, this is a copy from my system. Here you see Ubuntu, Windows Boot Manager, EFI USB device, if it's plugged in, and even if it's not, the EFI DVD, my CD-ROM, which is here and doesn't have anything in it, and that's why the path is blank. And I made an optional boot item called test. What you see, for example, with AN Launcher, what you get here is the device path. It is on hard disk one, GPT. And remember, we were talking about the GUIDs. This is the GUID of that particular item, that particular partition. And this is how he finds the boot. And he gives you at the end, in fact, the complete path. EFI, boot, launcher.efi. Launcher.efi is the um, name of the file for the AN launcher. If we have a look for Ubuntu, you see here, EFI, Ubuntu, Shim, X64. Again, the 64, that will always come up if you have a 64-bit uh, system. And it is not an ARM system, so another type of processor. The same, this is the Microsoft bootloader. And I had made in my test a copy of the AN launcher. So you get a complete list of what is available. At the end, you again see the shell prompt, so you know that was everything. So that's how we can see what the boot order is. So in other words, it should start with the AN launcher, then Ubuntu, and so on and so forth. Yeah? So if I should boot this system as displayed here, it would start up with the AN launcher, because that's the first item. This is the same, so you can now read it a little bit better. So the dump, what you in fact get. The boot order number zero is the first, then you get the variable name, description, and so on, as I explained when I showed the first page. Add an item. This is something you might want to do. For example, you then say, BCFG boot add. You have to say boot and add. Option one, you have to give the full path name and a description. Here is an example. So I say this is going to be option zero. On drive FS zero, be careful, this is a zero, not an O. Then the complete path, and then a description. This description, you can put in what you like. Obviously, the path has to be a valid path. And as you see, it always ends in .efi, because .efi means an executable. Yeah. Here, I've explained it a little, a little bit again. The option to add, the position, zero being the first, and the drive. Here we see the possibility to move something. Maybe the order 
is not correct, so you want to move. So for example here, I'm saying move item 3 to 7, and I've indicated what in fact the options are. The option is the 3 and the 7. Yeah. It never overwrites. It always moves. So you can't very easily damage the system, just it might not boot with what you want. We can remove an item, so you can specifically say in the boot order I want to remove it using the rm command. And here I give you an example, remove item 3 and what in fact happens. So if we had A, B, C, D, C is missing after the remove command. Straightforward, eh? Um, oh, that's a typo again. <laughs> Sorry guys, but you're clever enough to know that's a typo. Okay, the edit command. I have a small file, a configuration file often is not. For example, the AN launcher has a configuration file, an.cfg I think it is, but at least it ends with cfg. And I might want to change that. <coughs> to do that, I can use the edit command. The edit command has several hotkeys. Uh, some are almost the same, others are not, so you have to really remember this. When you do the edit command, what you see on the screen, I've compressed it here, you see at the top, UFI edit, this is the file name of what you're editing. It tells you if it's in Unicode or not, and whether it's been modified. So if you've done nothing, it's not modified. At the bottom, you see the line number where you are, wor which you're working on, so where your cursor is, and the character number. And it will eventually, if you try to save something, indicate if the file is modified and do you want to save it. And the file path name to save it. By changing the path of name you do effect effectively a save as. Yep. You also have a help possibility which is control E. Yeah, I keep using F1 but it doesn't work. <laughs> control E gives you then the list of the hotkeys. So it is very simple, very easy to use. Let's have a look at what more we have in EFI applications. There are a number of applications available which you can load into the EFI if you wish. Um, you have Python 3 and a memory test and there are more. These you can find on the internet. I have loaded the memory test and I've given you an address where you can load this, find this test. That's at uh, www.memtest86. And that gives you a truly handy memory test tool. So you can do a memory test outside of your system. So you don't have to try and boot some system up, run a program, you can run it directly by starting up the shell. Question? Yes. Ah, I didn't know. <laughs>
if you want to have a look at all the commands, I just listed them here so that in the presentation uh, <coughs> handout you can find them. You see, there's quite a lot. Questions? Oh, you're still all sleeping. Um, well, in that case, thank you. I can show you, but then we have to look at it directly on the PC. The memory test, how it works. It's, you've seen it more or less before, I think. And that was it then. Thank you. Thank you.